for today, and my name is Dean, the, as you can see on the screen, from Fengxia University. So before our presentation, I would like to ask all the other jurors to introduce themselves, as well as the leaders of the four groups to introduce your team briefly.
mean, uh, we reject. Thanks.
Georgia's and fellow computers and the report from Tintex Hardware. And today I'm going to talk about problem number 11, pump control. And the first standard, a simple water pump is made using a straw shaped into a triangle and cut open at the vertices. When such a triangle is powered in terms of the water, with one its vertices and rotating around its vertical axis, then the water may throw out through the straw. And we have to investigate how the geometry and all the relevant parameters parameters affect the pumping speed. And there are two main focus in my report. One is how the shape of the straw works in the phenomenon. And the other will be how the angular velocity affects these results. And this is my observation. And you can see that after the water will come up by a straw, and it will do a projectile motion. And you can see that the distance of the water will be farther and farther. So I use Python to show the process of pumping. And for my experience data, I use a very velocity motor to change the angular velocity and also the container to contain the water. And also use different transparent straw to do my experiment. And we use uh, electronic balance to measure the weight of the water. And also use infrared sensor to measure the rotating speed. And both of them could be connected to the Arduino, which can return the parameters of every time more precisely. And here, I use infrared sensor to measure routine speed. And you can see that I use a point with many holes. Then the infrared sensor will detect the time interval of every holes and return the rotating speed. And I also use a variable resistor to change the power, which means that we can change the rotating speed of the motor. And I also use the electronic balance to measure the variation of the weight. And from observation, we can see that the straw is not full of the water, which means that we can not just use the normal equation to simply describe the motion of the water. So I would like to build, build another explanation. And next, I would like to talk about how the water was pumped out. And we can consider the centrifugal force if we state the observer from in the rotating reference frame. And we also have to consider the sliding force caused by the gravity then we can get the condition of the critical angular velocity. And for my turn one, I would like to know how the critical angular velocity works in the phenomenon. And I replace some parameters with of my experiment model, and including uh, the depth, the straw in the water, and the angle of the straw. And I also would like to know how the radius of the straw affects the phenomenon. So next, um, you can see that when the depth of the straw immersed in the water becomes uh, higher, then the critical angular velocity becomes lower. It means that it will be more easier for the, the water to be pumped up. And I also change the angle of the straws. And you can see that when this angle is larger, then the critical angular velocity will become lower, which means that it also will be easier for the volume to be pumped up. And when I change the radius of the straw, then I can find that it will not affect the phenomenon very much. And also use Bernie's scale to measure the radius of it, which will make it more precise. So next, I would like to clarify the definition of pumping speed. Because in the past standards, we want us to investigate how the relevant parameters affect the pumping speed. And I separate it into two different conditions. And the condition one would be the volume of water pumped up per time. And condition two will be the final velocity the water comes out from the straw. And so first, I would like to talk about condition one first, which means the pumping speed. And I would like to describe the motion of the fluid by the relative motion. Then we have to consider the relative velocity when we set the observer on the straw. And also consider the tangential velocity caused by the same circular motion. And the summation of these two factors will be the absolute velocity. And in my derivation, I consider that the summation of the external torque acting on the content of the control volume is equal to the net rate of flow of angular momentum through the control surface. So here, I consider that the summation of the torque will be equal to the variation of the angular momentum. Then I set the reference point that I can write down the equation three. Then I suppose that the water in the motion of the water in the straw will be the steady form, then the next four rates of every part will be the same, then you can write down equation 4. 
and I replace the mass flow rate with the volume flow rate that I can read on in question five. They also have to consider the energy transfer. Then I combine these two equations that can get equation seven. And after we consider, we consider the relation between different vectors in this phenomenon. And then we can get, get the final equation, just like equation 12. The, and our two parallel here is actually being defined by the fixed reference points when we have to analyze a rotating system. But I think the symbol here is not too significant in my experiment. experiment. So I just use the R2 to, um, to represent the upper radius of the shore. So the Q in my equation here is actually the volume forward, which means the pumping speed that I want to get from the pumping standard. And I found that when the water is being pumped out, the water level and the water jet will become lower, which means that it will change, the, there are three parameters will be changed with time. So here I use Arduino, which can return the parameters of every time, but more precisely, which can uh, decrease the error of my experiment. So, and I, because it's very hard to measure, measure the real uh, power uh, acting on the stroke, so I would like to simplify it. I, I think the angular velocity and the power is actually one to one function. So we fix one of them, they will, other will be the same. Then we can simplify this equation just like the right one. So I would like to analyze how the relevant parameters affect the pumping speed here. So I found that the that the strong immersed water is actually positively correlated to the flow rate. And the R2 here which means the upper radius of the stroke, just like this graph. And when the outer radius of stroke become longer, then the flow rate will become lower. And also change the angle of the stroke. And I define the angle here just like the square. And when the angle becomes larger, then the flow rate will become higher, which means that it will be more, it will be easier for the water to be pumped out. And also change the radius of the stroke. And I found that the radius of the stroke will not affect this phenomenon really much. And next, I would like to talk about condition one, because I'm talking condition two, which means the final velocity if the water comes out from the stroke. So I consider the sliding force, which is caused by the gravity, and the rising force, which is caused by the centrifugal force. And after calculation, then we can get the relative velocity, just like this equation. But in order to get the absolute velocity, we have to consider both the relative velocity and the tangential velocity. And we can get the final equation just like this. And because the wire is actually the cartooning, so it's very hard for us to get the real velocity by using tracker or some other application. So I would like to get the final velocity by, analyze, by analyzing the projectile motion of the wire. So for my experiment three, I would like to measure the distance of the wire so we can know the final velocity of the wire. And there will be two variables in my experiment. What is the angular velocity of the stroke? And the other will be the upper radius of stroke, which means the geometry of the stroke. And next, you can find that when the angular velocity becomes higher, then the velocity which comes from the stroke will also become higher too. And you can see that it might be some error in my experiment. And I think it's because some, uh, something, some problems of my simplification of my derivation. And I think it's a very good point to be discussed. And next I would like to find the relationship between the upper radius of stroke and the velocity which come off on the stroke. And I find that uh, when the upper radius become higher, become longer, then the velocity will become higher too. So next I would like to talk about my conclusion. For this phenomenon, it's actually caused by the centrifugal force, which will give a rising force to the water. And I found that after the water was pumped out, then it will do a projectile motion, and which can help calculate the final velocity 
may come off on the water, but it come off on the shore. And also from that, um, the water would, uh, the shore is not full of the water, which means that we can not just use the preliminary expression to describe the motion of the fluid so simply. And for my experiments for the critical angular velocity, I found that with the depth, in the, the depth the strong immersed in water become longer, then the critical angular velocity will become uh, smaller, which, mean, which means that it will be more easier for water to be pumped out. And I also changed the angle of the stroke. Then I can find that uh, it's actually negatively correlated to the critical angular velocity. And also change the radius of stroke. And I thought that it would not affect the phenomenon very much. So my condition two, sorry, my final condition one, I change the depth the stroke immersed in water, and I can find that it's actually positively correlated to the flow rate. And I change the upper radius of the stroke, and then you can find that uh, it's, uh, when the upper radius of the stroke becomes longer, then the flow rate will become uh, And also change the angle of the stroke. Then I can find that when the angle becomes larger, then the flow rate will become higher too. And and when I change the radius of the stroke, I can find that it would also not affect this phenomenon very much. And for my condition two, I try to find the final velocity <coughs> that the water comes off on the stroke. Then I calculate the final velocity by uh, analyzing the projectile motion of the water. And, and I found that the upper radius is actually positively correlated to the velocity. And angular velocity is actually also positively correlated to the last thing too. That's all my presentation. Thanks for your attention. Thank you. So my first question is when you're doing this kind of analysis, you should make sure that are you using a non-inertial frame or an inertial frame? What is the coordinate system? Is it non-inertial or inertial? Um, uh, so I would like to analyze the, the uh, dif by different view of the um, motion of the water. Oh, okay, we can get that. Okay, so do you consider surface tension in your theory? No, I, I think it will be very small. Okay, okay. okay. It's more of it. But did you kind of consider the viscosity of the fluid? Uh, no, because I think the viscosity of the water will be very small. Yeah, we discussed it. Okay. So, uh, you, you said you measured the exit velocity based on the projectile motion of the droplets, right? Yes. And do you think air resistance is significant? Uh, um, actually, I found that the air resistance would not affect the thunder very much. So I don't think it affects the lot? Yes. Okay. So your definition of coming speed is, is it the exit velocity or the flow rate? It means the uh, flow rate. Flow rate. Actually. Yeah. So what is the point of measuring the exit velocity? Uh, because I think it's a very, it's actually a variable uh, point to be discussed in this phenomenon. Okay. Let me just get there. So, uh, I think you use some sort of electric scale to measure the weight of the water. Like not to measure the radius of the stroke. Yeah. Uh, how do you determine the pumping speed, the flow rate? How do you determine the flow of the water uh, all the time? Yeah, so if I measure the weight of right, the water. Yes. Yes. Okay, so you think the weight decreases with time because water flows out. Yes. And that's how you determine the flow rate. Yes. Okay. And did you calculate the Reynolds number of your system, the water flow? The Reynolds, uh, Reynolds number. Oh, I think it's actually related to the last this this So yeah, I okay. think it's important. Oh, so it's not very important. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So the main is for the opponents of the problem.
show you, I think the policy getting to the access, or the access of the uh, equipment will also affect the, uh, the normal, the, the normal force that getting uh, me measured by the electronic balance. So in the policy, I'm not sure, in the, like, points, yes. Uh, what gives what points? Um, because um, you can see that from my experience that the part of the rotating axis will be immersed in the water, right? Yes. Which means that and it will give some buoyancy oh. to the rotating axis of it. Yeah. Yes. So, but is it constant? Like, is um, when, the, constant? when the water level becomes low, lower, then yes. it will be constant. But I think it's very safe. So, I think it's actually ignorable. Okay, yeah, so maybe this is ignorable, but my point is that there's something that you consider. So, by using the second law, uh, if you want to calculate the time change of momentum, yes. then um, for your example, I think what you consider is this, right? You know, you know which experiment? Uh, in your entire system, yeah. You, you want to measure this the change in M, right? So you want to measure the change in M. This is what you want to measure. Yes. And you use this to measure because you know the velocity. Yeah. So you have this. But you need to also consider that there is also another term. So you need to also consider this term. Because when an explanation is that suppose a fluid, a water drop of mass M, yeah. So it gets out. You mean then we would uh, the motion of the for each side, the container will also cause the change of the okay. mass. I mean no, no because it not only the mass of exit, but it also has the velocity that exits, right? Uh, yes. And you can say by Newton's third law, there is a um, force in the opposite direction that accelerates it. Because the, this part accelerates the droplet. Yeah, so this part accelerates because the fluid here accelerates this. So this must give it some force downwards, right? Yes. So. Did you consider this force? Because if an accident was slow enough, in my experiment, yeah. I measure the variation of the weight. Yeah, yeah variation of weight. Yeah. And I, and in my uh, hypothesis, I suppose that the force is the force is a steady flow. Ste steady flow. Yes. Yeah, but even if it's steady flow, it gets out some velocity. Right? Um, yes. Yeah, but and there will be and by Newton's third law, there will be an inverted force. Uh, yes, downwards. but the and variation that is not mass. Yeah. The variation of the weight of the amount of water will yeah. not be determined by this. Um, but if the velocity going out is different, then it will also affect n because um, there's a. I fix for the angular velocity. You fix the angular velocity. So and by using the infrared sensor, which can detect the angular velocity. Yes. Yeah. So I think the uh, velocity caused by the velocity. Uh, sorry, the force caused by the velocity of the water will not affect the amount of water. Oh, okay, so I think you should do some calculation about that too, proof. Okay, yeah, okay. So the second thing is, uh, I think you measured both exit velocity and and the flow rate. Yes. Yeah. So what do you want to measure both? Like, aren't they related? Uh, like, do you think Actually, they're related? Actually, I think, uh, in my consideration, some, some people might under misunderstood the meaning of the pumping speed. Uh, because in the definition of pumping speed, it might be the volume of the volume. Yeah. Yeah. Time, right? yeah. um, but someone misunderstood that might be the final velocity come off on the stroke. Oh, okay. okay. So I think, but I think it's actually terrible to uh, explore it. So I will yeah. do this experiment. And do you think the exit velocity and flow rate are connected? Like we use an equation. Mm, actually, like because the flow rate, um, in my simple, I use the Q to reference to yeah, the flow rate, right? Yes. And it can be written like the amount of water pumped up by time. Yes, it is. And, and it can actually uh, be written like the uh, area of a. Uh, yeah, and times the exit velocity. Yes. Right? right? Yeah. So you, you measure both, right? Uh, actually, I think the final velocity will also be uh, determined by this. By this? Yeah, but you measure this and this. Uh, yes, yes. Yeah, so did you compare them to see if they match according to your theory? Like, because you measure both quantities, maybe you should compare if they match. Right? Uh, yes, I, I think it's a very good uh, thought, and I could uh, not find the relation between it by com uh, considering the area of the stroke. Yeah, okay. So, uh, do you think, 
like, maybe we can interpret both, both ways, right? Yeah, maybe you think we can interpret the experiment both ways. And yes. in your experiment, you said that the strong gradient doesn't affect the flow, the exit velocity, right? Uh, yes, because in my consideration of my derivation, yeah. I think that I simplify the model just like this. Yes. So I consider the one linear uh, motion of the fluid. Oh, because I, uh, but I think when angular velocity be higher, yeah. then there will be more wildly pump out uh, in the same time. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. would make the therapy sort of be bigger. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. So, uh, you said you use the air resistance, right? Uh, yes. You said you use projectile motion. So, yes. do you think air resistance is significant? Uh, because uh, in my consideration, yeah. I think the, the water has to be pump out. Uh, just like uh, many particles of the water, just like yes. this. Yeah. And because because the uh, air resistance is related to the velocity of the water. Yes. Right? yes. And and I uh, but the mass of the point is very small. Yes. So I think and um, it can be normal. But if the mass is very small, then the acceleration will be large, right? The acceleration caused by the um, Air, air drag. So you know when the drop is smaller, the air drag is more significant, right? Do you know that? Um, sorry. When well, you have to consider the effect of the uh, uh, air resistance, yeah, yeah. So, so I can yeah, oh, you can talk, yeah. Uh, I can consider that it can be written like like this, right? Yes. So yes. and. How do you think I should determine the... No, I think it's, it's not that hard. You just calculate the terminal velocity. So okay. you know, like when, water, when there's rain, water droplets have a terminal velocity. And do you know what order of magnitude that is? Okay. 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 How fast does water droplets go? I think it's around 5 meters per second, right? It's not very fast. It doesn't... Uh, it's like, yes. Yeah. yeah. But, and your, but exit velocity is actually very close to that order of magnitude. So I think air resistance should be considered because because uh, in my uh, actually I have done an experimental yeah. test where the uh, air system would affect the uh, result very uh, well or not. Yeah. Uh, but I found that it would not affect very much. Okay, so you did experiment. Yes. Okay, okay so you taste 32. 32, 32. Yeah. yeah, I think you mentioned that there is some mistake in your field. You mentioned okay. 32. Yeah. 32. Yeah, I think that theory is wrong. So, so what? Yeah, so maybe we no, not have the national theory as well. Do, do you think we have discussed the theory? You said there's a uh, discrepancy. I'm not sure where it is. I'm not sure. the error of the results. Yeah, well, like, where do you think it's not fit? Where do you think it doesn't fit? Uh, actually, just what I have mentioned. When the, drop, when the angular velocity becomes larger, yes. there will be more water become out in the same time. Yeah. Will be this layer be to be um, smaller, thicker, thicker. 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 Oh, yeah. So, so, yeah. so I think uh, because in the projective motion I only consider the just like this circle um, trajectory yeah. of the water, right? Yeah. And but and the inner layer also affect this result. So it will be my some error in my calculation. So you think the error is due to this layer being this size? Yes, yeah, because it's very hard to define the object of the area water because it's a continuum. Yeah. So in fact this area it means this, this area, right? Uh, yes. Yeah, so this area is actually a function of velocity. Right? Because when the velo velocity, exit velocity is higher, this area is smaller. So it changes with your omega. Uh, yes. Okay, so it's a very complicated. And these two are not very simply related, like Q and B. So they're not like proportional. Because, uh, because you have to consider the yeah. taking of the bar here. Yeah, okay, so it's very complicated. Yes. Okay. So, I think that's it. Alright, thank you very much. Time for the opponent to summarize the discussion. So first we discuss with the second law because the reporter is a scale to measure the weight and I think we should also consider the uh the forces given by the acceleration of DVDT. And the second we discuss the relationship of flow rate and exit velocity. And then there was a saw that the relationship is not very simple because even if you write Q is A B, the area A is a function of velocity because it's treated with the And second, we discuss about the um, air resistance, and I think it's important the air resistance shouldn't be negligible because the um, terminal velocity of air drops is actually
actually very similar to the experiment, but the reporter said he has done an experiment and proved that it doesn't matter. And um, I, at the very first of our discussion, I clarified that the reporter is using a non inertial frame. And thank you. All right, we ask the reviewer to ask questions. Well, first, I'd like to ask you to go to the reporter a question. Well, conducting the, when, during the conduction of the experiment, I believe that the water level will also drop, in, uh, so affecting the immersion depth of the straw, right? Uh, and then yes. you also mentioned that in your in your report that the immersion depth will affect the overall experiment. Then how do you explain that? Uh, because when the water will come out, then the amount of water will be will be smaller, right? Yeah, yes, I understand. But you said during your experiment, in all of your experiments, when the experiment has been conducted for a few seconds the water will get pumped out and yes. the emergent height will decrease, right? Yes. Then how do you how do you consider the influence? Um, actually, because it will change the water jet, we will make the, the decrease of the power given to the uh, stroke, right? Then you should, uh, okay, so what does the opponent uh, think about that? Uh, I think if you want to control the water level, you can use the water hose to constantly give water into it. Uh -huh. Yeah, and even if water comes out, if the flow rate inside the is larger, the water surface will remain safe. Okay. So I would like to ask the reporter, do you think there's a positive correlation between the between the final velocity and the flow rate? And the flow rate. Um, actually, in this equation, then the connection between these two parameters will be the area, right? Yes. But I think the area, because the water this flow is not full of the um, flow of the fluid. So the area might be changed. So it might be a very complicated question. Okay. So uh, I'll also ask the other question. When changing the angle of uh, the vertex angle of the uh, straw, the radius of spinning will also change, right? The upper radius, of, uh, as you said in your report, the upper radius of your straw will also change. And what do you consider the the, uh, the I'm sorry, could you? So as the vertex angle of your straw changes, yes. the upper radius will also change. Yes. And how do you describe the influence? Because then it actually, actually I think the uh, rotating axis of the straw. Okay. Okay, I understand that. And what is, her, uh, what is the opponent thing about that? Uh, uh, which question? Uh, the about the shaking angle. Shaking angle. So I think the report mentioned that when the angle is larger, so when the straw is more flat, the water is, water is easier to get out. Okay. Uh, and Another question. Do you think the fact that this system is whether laminar or turbulent will affect the overall results? Sorry, could you replace? Okay, so do you think the fact that this system is laminar, which is Reynolds number lower than 2000, and turbulent, uh, which is Reynolds number higher than 4000, affect the overall results? You mean the inference of the viscosity? Yes. And I think it actually is normal because the real number of the water is very small, which should be normal. Right, so time for the reviewer and uh, for the preparation, two minutes.
Peter will take the floor and then Peter speak. Good morning, fellow contestants and the honorable jurors. I am the reviewer from Team One. Right now, I'd like to review the problem with the level of this question. So, the problem statement is right here that the reporter being focuses on the target geometry of the overall PPC speed and the angular velocity. So, so here to report, uh, the, the, the phenomenon is that the water will become out of the straw from the two vertices. The theory they use is the centrifugal force, the relative motion, and angular momentum and the torque. And the, the experiment, they discovered that depth has positive correlation uh, to the concept of the pumping speed, and the other areas has negative correlation to the pumping speed. The angle of the straw has positive correlation, the radius of the straw doesn't have any correlation with the pumping speed, and the angle of the velocity has positive correlation with the pumping speed. So let's talk about the pros and cons of about the reporters. So first, he has a theta procedure of the experiment, and they have a very meticulous experiment set. And second, they use the animation to animate the phenomenon, which makes it very clear. And also, they have a very clear definition about pumping speed and also the final velocity. And the cons is that they regard the experiments. Uh, they have two redundant regarding about the uh, experiments explanation, and also they explain the formula a bit too vaguely. And also they have ambiguous explanation on how water can be project of motion. And the pros and cons of the components, they take the resistance into consideration and viscosity. They have very good discussion about how the mass of water should be measured, and also the critical, the critical viewpoint on the comparison between theory and the experiments. Uh, however, they also have cons, which is that they lack the comprehension about the course theory. Uh, theory. So, in, uh, in the first discussion, they talk about how the normal force will, uh, will be constant or not. And we reviewer believe that the normal force is not constant and the reviewer should explain in greater detail in their report. And also they discuss how the pumping speed and the final velocity is correlated. And we believe that <coughs> we, uh, considering both the final velocity and also the pumping speed can, and comparing them in their report can increase the credibility of the, the experiment and, and clarify the experiment overall. And also, uh, they discuss whether the, the, straw's, the straw's radius will affect the overall pumping speed or not, and we believe that it has, on, it has its effect on the pumping speed. And they talk about the air resistance. Uh, well, we agree with the uh, with the report, sorry, with the opponent. And however, we believe that the reporter should also explain it in greater detail in the experiments. And number five, if the opponent asked the reporter about the mistake in experimental data, and we believe that the reporter should clarify the, uh, the deviation between the experimental data and the theory. And there are some of the missing points for both the opponent and the for both the opponent and the reporter. The first one is the water level drop theory experiments, and the second one is the friction between the fluid and the straw wall, which we believe that this can be considered, and also the length of the straw and the boundary condition of whether the pumping motion will happen or not. So this is basically the review of our team. So thank you everybody. Okay. So I just call the report. <coughs> okay. Hello, judges and fellow competitors. I'm the report from Test Cover. And so and, and this is my conclusion remark. For, and for my for my reports, that I I separate the condition into two condition <coughs> of the pumping speed. So one would be the one would be the pumping speed, uh, which means the volume for it, and we also consider the final velocity come off on the straw. And for my experiments, I do the experiment for these two conditions. And for a discussion between with my with the opponent and the reviewer, then we discuss about the viscosity, and I think the viscosity of water is very small, which can be ignored, and the motion of the water, and I think the motion of water, uh, the straw is not full of the water, so we can not use the Brownian equation to simply describe the motion of it, and and he also mentioned some direction errors, but it actually means the uh, data errors here, and I have it. Made an explanation for this, and 
the definition of the pumping speed, and there are two definitions of that. And actually, the more correct direction, the definition would be the flow rate. And we also talk about the, the relation between flow rate and the velocity of the water. And I think the area of it will be very complex. So, and it, it could be so it could be explored more. And and what the inertial frame or non-inertial frame I use actually I consider both of them. And and if we're experiment, we talk about many factors that affect the experiment. Thank you. Let me stop. And uh, now we go back to our theory. If you have any questions. Actually, uh, um, I have done an experiment, but I have put it on the flight. And I found that the result 
said, and if I consider the effect of the error system would not affect the result much. Uh -huh. So how do you think, why do you think this is important? Yeah, so we intuitively think that when raindrops drop, the speed is not very low, for example, 10 meters per second. And the, but, but this is not a raindrop. Yeah, but it's right. still a water right. drop. And what we want to be the velocity is in the same order of magnitude with the terminal velocity. How long do you feel? Well, I believe the, the like the resistance, I'm uh, sorry, the friction between the fluid and the structure should be considered because yeah, like the viscosity will also have its impact. Right, I mean, so in the future, about one minute to make a final decision on the score.